I am just going to be honest, Septandi has been kind of rough. Now don't get me wrong, I had an amazing time at Vintage Computer Fest Midwest because people had all kinds of really cool Tandy setups on display and everything uh, was just something you could just reach out and touch or uh, try their new product or uh, sit and, and let people that were very, very knowledgeable give you a demonstration. Like right here, this gentleman uh, made a MIDI interface for the Coco so that way that you could hook it up to uh, sort of more modern kind of uh, keyboards and have it play all kinds of cool music with MIDI tunes. Um, there were people there that were showing off different sort of devices and upgrades and uh, replacement parts and all that. And it just it really, really impressed me, just the ingenuity and the, uh, the, the coolness of the community. So I have this idea that what I was going to do is like a red paper clip where you take items maybe of lesser value and you slowly sort of trade up to try to get the item that you want. And what I brought was a couple of boxed, vintage, like sealed, never been opened, Macintosh items. And I thought, ah, I'll try to trade these off and get some neat Tandy items just to kind of show how easy it is to get into Tandy collecting. But folks were so busy and they were very, very nice. And I tried to do some trades and things, but I could never really get anything that got to the level that I thought would make a good video. So what I decided to do instead is maybe start looking into neat, tandy things you can do on your Mac. And that's when I remembered something. I remember back in the day, a friend of mine who was a sysop, who always had the latest, greatest, cool stuff, uh, showed me a Coco emulator running on kind of like his first generation Power Mac. And I thought, wow, that would be like the perfect thing. So. I decided that I was going to go ahead and maybe track that down and do maybe like a little let's play. Well, the problem was I couldn't remember for sure what it was called. And so I racked my brain for like the better part of an hour trying to remember. And then I thought, why not just go out to Cocopedia and <laughs> just look it up out there? So I went out to Cocopedia and I went down through the list and I thought, okay, well, yeah, there, there's a ton that people have made over the years. Thank goodness that it wasn't just uh, something in my brain um, stroking out that uh, made me think that there was a Coco emulator. So sure enough, there is a virtual Coco emulator, Coco 2 emulator for the Macintosh. Not much is known of this emulator. Hmm, very mysterious. Uh, so I thought, well, I'll go ahead and I'll download it. So. Uh, it just it goes ahead and it redirects you over here to the Color Computer Archive, and there's a file. Hey, easy peasy, lemon squeezy. Uh, so I went ahead and I downloaded this onto my Power Mac, and uh, you know it's an HQX with Compact Pro inside of it. So wow, that's redundantly redundant. Uh, but I went ahead and extracted everything out, and when you double click the program, nothing would happen. It would just launch the program and immediately quick back to the desktop. Very frustrating. So I thought, well, maybe I'll do a little bit more research. And uh, I am here to tell you that uh, there's not a lot of information out here. It's it's pretty much uh, just that link to Cocopedia, and that's about it. If you if you really try to do some more digging, you'll find ones for newer Macs, but you won't find one for classic Macs. So I thought, well, maybe I'm using the wrong search criteria. V Coco, no, more Disney stuff. Anyway, couldn't really get much of anywhere with that until I made a discovery. I started searching around for that full file name and I found a website where basically they had a archive of uh, the same thing on the other site. And you you um, you have some links here, but hey, these links are different. Goes to some Maya.com with uh, like you know you can see the you can see the URL down there. But here's something new: a ROM file. So the obviously there is a ROM that's needed by the emulator for it to actually run. So let's try to download it. Sad trombone. These links are deader than a can of spam. So. If you try to uh, this Maya.com, this is all these are all just dead orphaned links. Super sad. But at least we have something that maybe we can do something with. 
And so I took those URLs and I stuck them into the Wayback Machine. And the Wayback Machine was very nice enough to have many, many archives of this site going back quite a number of years. Here's the first link. And lo and behold, we have some information about the emulator here. Um, it's a virtual Coco. It's a PowerPC native demo app. Uh, there was a few people that were in on the uh, development of this. So that's kind of cool. Um, talking about things for the future. Um, hey, even like a neat little uh, tape import utility where you could like record your cocoa tapes and then feed them into the emulator. Super great. But better than anything else, a working archived link to the ROM <laughs> that's needed to actually run the program. And also some cool stuff. Uh, there appeared to at one time been a 68K version that was maybe planned, uh, but was crashed when they tried to, um, uh, try to compile it. So unfortunately, not all of these links are good, but enough of these links are good that you can get the ROM file and you can go ahead and download uh, kind of an earlier version of the emulator. And I thought, well, what else do we got here? So if you spin through and try all of these other archives that they've made of the site, um, there's basically only been like one update since that first archive. And uh, so the version was updated to a 0 0.95 um, and uh, they did make some fixes and things like that, but uh, and you can download the newer version of the application. But um, many thanks to Phil uh, for kind of spearheading this emulator. And uh, this was a fun little trip. I guess I'm, I'm not joking, guys. This was a couple of days of, you know, digging and playing around and trying to find links that work and stuff and then get it moved over to a machine and test things. So enough uh, build up. Let's go ahead. Let's launch and let's play around with the emulator. And then I'll tell you something neat when we're done there. All right, here we are over on my handy dandy Macintosh Tandy. And this is just a generic uh, 7.61 install on a 6100. Uh, nothing too fancy. I I'm fairly certain that this program, just from my experimentation, is only going to work on old world ROM Macintoshes. So that means kind of your pre-PCI uh, Power Macs. Uh, you know, it it'll probably work on like the upgrade card and things like that that are kind of part of that world. But uh, your mileage may vary. I didn't have a lot of success getting this to run on like uh, OS 9 or anything like that. So that's why we're just kind of going generic and old school for this uh, as we play around. Uh, but anyway, uh, this uh, setup right here that I've got, I've got the Virtual Coco app. And yeah, it says 1.0. I'm pretty certain this is the that 9.05 or 9.50 or whatever it was that was the very last version you could download out there on the author's archived website. There's also a little bit of documentation here that um, has some information about kind of what games will actually work with this or which ones were tested to work at that time. Um, Again, your mileage may vary on playing different things. Uh, the getting started file basically just kind of lets you know uh, different things that work with the me like menu options and stuff in the application. Um, it's uh, it works pretty well, but uh, you know there are some things. This README uh, I'm not going to be able to open it here on my old machine <laughs> until I change the file type or something. But anyway, um, I have these all archived off and. The thing I was going to say is, since I've done all this legwork, uh, I'm going to go ahead and archive this all off, the different versions and the ROMs and pretty much everything you need except for the games themselves. That'll be up to you to source. Uh, it'll be out there on Macintosh Garden, hopefully by the time you see this video. So we've got the app, we've got the documentation, we have those elusive ROM files, uh, which... Um, uh, was the uh, thing that was stymieing me previously. So let's go ahead and uh, let's see if we can actually play a game. So, hey, what do you know? Uh, again, nothing happens if you try to run this and you don't have the ROM files in that root directory. But um, we've got some, uh, like basically as you saw in the um, those readmes, 
Um, here's the team. Uh, some of these guys are still around doing stuff these days. Some have gone on to bigger and uh, better things. So uh, thank you to all the people that put all the time and trouble into this. Uh, you know, it's uh, without you, we wouldn't have all this fun things. So we've got uh, sort of the different menus that were kind of laid out in that other thing. But um, now that we've got the program up here, let's go ahead and we're going to load a disk. And the way this works, which is, uh, I, you know, I would not doubt that I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> There's probably like a very slick way to do all this. But um, if you have a game, I think you, what you can do is you can load it into the like virtual sort of these virtual disk drives here. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to open up. I've got a few of these kind of prepared and I'm, I'm going to tell you, Hey, there's a lot more files here than what's here. There is. And I'll tell you why here in just a minute. So let's go ahead and, uh, yeah, we'll just load that one. So there we go. We've got, we've got a disc in our virtual drive. Well, how do we get it to actually load here? What can you, you can do is click it. It'll automatically run the Coco command to load this from disc. And then at this point we can just execute it. Oh crap. Hey, that's the other thing. Uh, you have to make sure you have your caps lock on. <laughs> and there you go. Uh, we have our little Coco game running on our Power Mac. Pretty, pretty neat. All right, let's uh, play a game, uh, which I will be terrible at. And uh, that is just the way that things go. Uh, yeah, there we go. Hey, the game has started. <laughs> not, not that I know what to do. Oh, I'm, and I died. There we go. Hey, I remember now. All right. So you got audio. Oh, the controls are very unforgiving. Let's see. Can I get all these doodads here? Oh, man. That guy is... He's tricky. Okay, let's see. What happens when I clear all these? And then come over here. Very nice. Uh, whatever that was. Oh, well. Oh. Well, there you have it. Uh, obviously, I'm very terrible at Canyon. <laughs> so, uh, but there are a, a lot of other um, cool games that do work on this emulator. And they're all worth, uh, you know, just checking out. So, so you're like, hey, uh, there's like a ton of stuff in here that isn't like showing up in the app. What's the deal? Well, the deal is this. Uh, like many things of this era, you have to have the file types correct on your games if you want them to show up in the Coco emulator. So what you've got to do is you've got to actually go out and use a program like Creator Changer. And what we're going to do is we are going to go and we're going to surf out to where our game disks are. And let's say, let's just go down and, oh, Zaxxon's a lot of fun. Let's try Zaxxon. And what we're going to do is we're going to say, you got to change the creator type to Coco. And you got to change the file type to disk. And that's it. If you do that, now when you go back into the emulator, let's go ahead and we're going to load our disks. And we're going to say open. And hey, what do you know? Zaxxon wasn't there previously, and now it is. So from there, you can load it, and you can load your game. And hey, it loaded it into memory, and from there, you should be able to just execute it. Uh, not forgetting that you have to have your caps lock on. And there you go. It worked. So there are uh, some games work better than others. Again, this is emulation. Uh, you'll have to play around with it and see. But in any case, I just thought this would be neat, a neat thing. And oh my gosh, I slid down the rabbit hole for <laughs> the better part of, uh, of uh, several weeks, like trying to put this all together. Uh, so maybe uh, before the month is up, you will maybe give it a shot. Go out there and uh, maybe play some Coco games on your classic Mac and, you know, really kind of, uh, you know, 
uh, stretch a little bit of muscle. Uh, you know, maybe if this is something that isn't something that you commonly do every day. So anyway, I just wanted to say thank you again for joining me for yet another video. And as I always say, Apple II forever. This video was brought to you with the help of my patrons on Patreon. If you'd like to know more about how you can support the channel for as little as a dollar a month, please click the link in the video description. Thanks for watching.